In this topic, you will learn about working with a slide, entering text in a slide. In the last topic, you learned about the exciting and new features in PowerPoint 2010. Now let's put that knowledge to use by actually creating a presentation and using the features as we progress through it. Let's assume you're planning to have a big toy shop come library. You can advertise your business by doing some mouth publicity, distributing brochures and giving an impressive presentation to the parents and children. Let's start putting together a presentation so that you can present this in schools, playgroups to other targeted audience. Let's assume the name of your store is Toy Zone. We will prepare a presentation that provides information about your venture. We have opened a blank presentation for you. Let's first enter the title of your library. Click the blinking box to place the cursor in the click to add title box. Notice the box you clicked has become active. This is known as a placeholder box and is usually identified by a dotted border. As the name suggests, placeholder box is a container to hold information. When a placeholder box is selected, it is surrounded by circles and squares called as handles. These handles allow you to resize and move the box around. Now let's enter text in it. Type toy zone at the blinking cursor position. Notice, as you type the text also appears in the slide pane on the left. Now let's add a subtitle to the slide. Click the blinking box to place the cursor in the click to add subtitle box. Type play and learn at the blinking cursor position. Click anywhere on the slide to deselect the text box. Thus, you have successfully entered the title and subtitle for your presentation. In this topic, you will learn about inserting slide, deleting slide, duplicating a slide. Now let's move ahead with the presentation and add a few slides. There are several ways of inserting a slide and we will learn each one by one. In the slides group, you will notice an icon new slide along with a small arrow next to it. Remember, the small arrow indicates that there are more options available. Click the blinking new slide icon. Notice a new slide with default layout and placeholders is inserted in the presentation. A layout is nothing but the way different elements are arranged on a slide. Default layouts are available in PowerPoint 2010, but you can easily move around elements on your slide. A new slide always gets inserted below the active slide. Once a slide is inserted, it becomes active. Active slide is indicated by an orange border surrounding the slide as indicated by colored arrow. You can easily move slides around. We will learn about it in the coming chapters. Now let's quickly see the various options available. Click the blinking arrow. Notice the various themes available. By default, the layout that has title and content in it is inserted in a presentation. Other themes or layouts that are available are title slide, section header, etc. You will also notice that at the bottom of the submenu, some more options are available. Duplicate selected slide. Duplicates or makes a copy of the selected or active slide or slides. Let's quickly see how it works. Press the escape key on the keyboard. 
We have selected slide 1 for you. Click the blinking down arrow. Select the blinking duplicate selected slides option. Notice the duplicate slide similar to slide 1 is inserted in the presentation. Since we do not need this extra slide, let's undo this operation. Click the blinking undo icon. Notice the slide that you had inserted is now no longer visible. Clicking the undo button once undoes the last change. However, if you want to see the list of changes that you have done, you can view the undo list. Click the blinking arrow next to the undo icon. Notice you can view the list of actions that you have done. Like typing since in last topic, we had was creating a new slide like entering title and subtitle. Also notice the last two actions got selected, new slide and typing. Let's undo some action. Click the blinking typing action. The new slide that we had inserted has been removed and the subtitle text that we had entered has also been deleted. Now let's use the keyboard shortcut for undoing. Press Ctrl plus Z simultaneously on your keyboard. Notice the title Toy Zone has now disappeared. Opposite to undo action is the redo action. Redo allows you to repeat a previously undone action. Remember, you can only redo what you have undone earlier. Let's redo the typing action so that the subtitle appears on the slide again. Click on the blinking redo icon. Notice the text toy zone has appeared again on the slide. We click the redo button for two more times to get the subtitle and the new slide back again. Now let's move ahead with inserting slides. Let's now insert a slide with a different layout. Click the blinking arrow. Select the blinking comparison slide layout. Notice a new slide is inserted with a different layout that allows you to insert content that you want to compare. You can also use the keyboard shortcut to insert a new slide. Simultaneously, press the Ctrl plus M keys on the keyboard. Notice a new slide is inserted below the active slide. You will also notice that the slide recently inserted has the same layout as the one above it. In the coming topics, we will learn how to change the layout of a slide. You can also insert a slide by clicking the new slide icon on the quick access toolbar. Thus, there are various ways of inserting a blank slide in your presentation. To delete a slide, initially there was a delete button in the slide tab. It has been removed in PowerPoint 2010. Right click on the blinking slide to delete the slide that we have selected. Click on the blinking delete slide option. Notice the slide is deleted. Let's now save the presentation. Simultaneously press the Ctrl plus S keys on the keyboard. The Save as dialog box opens up. By default, the name of the title in the slide appears as the name of the file. Let's not change the file name. Click the blinking Save button. Thus, your first presentation is saved as toyzone.pptx in the location documents. In this topic, you will learn about selecting a layout for slide, changing the layout of a slide. In this topic, you will learn how to insert a slide. Let's now insert some content and then later on learn how to change the layout. We have inserted the title About Us for you in the slide 2. 
Let's now insert some more text. Click the blinking box. Type store located at city center mall at the blinking cursor position. We have entered the remaining text for you. Let's assume you now want to enter the toys available at your toy store offers. So let's move to the third slide in the presentation. Click the blinking slide 3. The third slide has a comparison layout. Remember, you had inserted a slide with a comparison layout in the previous topic. Since you want to enter the products, a comparison layout is not the correct layout. Let's change it. Click the blinking layout icon. Notice the various layouts available. Click the blinking title only layout. Notice the layout has changed instantly. Similarly, you can change the layout of any slide. Remember, you can change the slide layout even after you have inserted content in it. Let's quickly see how you can do it. Click the blinking slide 2. Click the blinking layout icon. Select the blinking content with caption. Notice the layout has changed. Let's keep the current layout for now. In this topic, you will learn about inserting text boxes, Entering text in a text box. Formatting a text box. Let's now move ahead with entering the details about the toys available at your toy store. Since in the last topic you had selected a title only layout, there is no placeholder box for you to enter text. We have entered the title Our Offerings for you. Let's now insert a text box to enter the product list. Click the blinking Insert tab. Click the blinking text box icon from the text group. To place the selected text box on the slide, you need to click on the slide where you want to insert the text box. Click the blinking box to place the text box on the slide. Drag the right side of the text box to increase its size. Notice the box has become long. Right-click the blinking box on the border of the text box. Select the blinking Edit Text option. You can now see the cursor blinking in the box. Let's enter some text. Type Educational Toys at the blinking cursor position. Press the Enter key on the keyboard. Type Innovative Toys at the blinking cursor position. We have entered the remaining text for you. You can notice the Drawing Tools tab above the ribbon. Click on the blinking Drawing Tools. The different options available in this tab allow you to customize shapes and turn them into professional looking graphics. You can insert new shapes, change the style of the shape, apply elegant styles to the text within the shape and rotate the shape as well. Let's change the appearance of the shape. The text box has been already selected for you. Click on the blinking Edit Shape box in the Insert Shapes tab. Move your mouse over the Blinking Change Shape option. Notice the different options appear. Let's try out a cloud shape. Click the blinking box. You cannot notice the cloud shape right now. We will have to select a style. Click the blinking down arrow of the shape and style to change the style. 
Notice many style options are available to you. As you move your mouse pointer over the different styles, you can see how your text will appear on the slide at the background. Since the orange one looks good, let us select this. Select the blinking orange color option. Notice the text box looks different. Shape fill allows you to fill a shape with your choice of color if you don't want to use from the inbuilt style gallery. Shape outline allows you to select an outline color for the border of the shape. Shape effects allow you to give a different effect to the shape. To view the different effects, click the blinking down arrow next to shape effects icon. Notice the various options available. Let's view the options available in the glow menu. Move your mouse over the blinking glow menu. Move your mouse over the blinking box. In the background, you can see how this glow effect will look. Since this one looks good, click on the blinking box. Notice the glow effect applied to the text box. You can try out different effects from the different effects available. Let's now quickly study the remaining options on the drawing toolbar. Shapes allow you to insert different shapes on the slide. Edit shape option allows you to change the selected shape to another shape. If you have a combination of text and shapes on your slide, then the arrange options allows you to arrange the shapes and text back and forth. We have inserted another slide for you and also entered some text in it. Another interesting feature of the text box is that if the text starts overflowing the text box, you have various autofit options that allow you to select specific action to be taken. Let's learn it with an example. Type friendly and trained attendance at the blinking cursor position. Press the Enter key on the keyboard. As long as you continue typing into the text box, the text box will keep on increasing in size and will try to fit in the text entered. We have removed the cloud behind the text and added few more bullet points. As long as you continue typing into the text box, the text box will keep on increasing in size and will try to fit in the text entered. Auto fit tries to fit the text to the text box in two ways. It either shrinks the text to fit the text box or expands the text box. You can change the behavior so that it always behaves the same way when the text overflows the text box. To change the behavior of the text, click on the blinking Align Text icon. Click on the blinking more options menu item. Notice format text effects dialog box opens. This dialog box is divided into two sections. The left section has the options you may want to change. The default option selected is text box here. The right section has the setting for the text box. You can see the auto fit settings here. The resize shape to fit text is the default for auto fit, click the blinking Do Not Auto Fit. Click the blinking Close button. Notice the text is spited into columns though. This option is convenient. It does not suit our purpose for now. So let's undo it. Press Ctrl plus Z key simultaneously on the keyboard. Notice the cursor goes out of the text box. The text box will no longer be adjusted as you keep on entering text because you have entered the Do Not Auto Fit option. Since this option is not suitable for us, let us select another option. We have opened the Format Text Effects box for you. Click on the blinking Shrink Text 
on overflow option. Click on the blinking close button. The cursor is on the last word in the text box. Press the enter key on your keyboard. Type O at the blinking cursor position. Notice the text has been shrunk in size. We have entered the remaining text for you. This can also be split into two columns in the same slide. Let's learn how to do it. We have also opened the Format Text Effects dialog box for you. Click on the Blinking Columns button. Notice the two options, Number and Spacing. The number of columns is currently 1. Let's increase and make it 2. Click on the blinking small upward arrow of the Number option. Click on the blinking OK button. Click on the blinking close button. Notice the text is splitted into columns. Though this option is convenient, it does not suit your purpose for now. So let's undo it. Press Ctrl plus Z key simultaneously on the keyboard. Notice the text are now in one column only. This topic ends here. In this topic, you will learn about formatting text in a slide. In the last topic, you learned about inserting text box and entering text in it. Let's now learn how to format text. Click the blinking slide too. Let's change the font of the title About Us. To select the text About Us, click and drag your mouse from the blinking box on the left to the blinking box on the right. The text About Us is selected and you will notice that a floating toolbar appears above the selected text. It is similar to the font group in the Home tab with frequently used commands. Move your mouse over the blinking toolbar. Click the blinking font drop-down. Notice the various fonts available. Click the blinking box to scroll down. Select the blinking Castellar font. Notice the change in the font. Let's now change the size of the text. You can either enter or select a number from the font size drop-down or use the Increase Font command next to it. Let's use the Increase Font command. Click the blinking Increase Font button. Notice the font size has grown. The font size number appears in the font size box. Let's now use the font commands available on the ribbon. Press the escape key to close the floating toolbar. Let's now change the font size using the font size drop-down. Click the font size drop-down. Select the blinking 32 number. The text size has increased noticeably. Let's decrease it now. Click the blinking decrease font size command. Notice the size is reduced to 28. The command next to decrease font size is the clear all formatting that clears all the formatting done till now and leaves just the plain text. Let's try it out. Click the blinking clear all formatting command. Notice all the formatting is removed and you can see the text in the original style. Since we do not want the original style, let's undo the change. Simultaneously, press the Ctrl plus Z keys. Let's now change the color of the text. Click the blinking font color drop-down. Select the blinking light blue color from the standard colors section. Let's try changing the case of the selected text. Click the blinking Change Case drop-down. Select the blinking Upper Case option. The Character Spacing command allows you to increase the spacing between characters. Let's try it out. Click the blinking Character Spacing drop-down. Select the blinking Very Tight option. 
Notice the space between characters has reduced. Let's try another style. Click the blinking character spacing drop down. Select the blinking very loose command. Notice the space between characters has increased. Thus you can easily explore various spacing options. We have reverted back to the original style for your convenience. Let's now try giving a shadow effect to the selected text. Click the blinking text shadow command. Notice the text seems to have a shadow behind it. Click the blinking strike through command near to the text shadow command. Notice the text appears with a strike through effect. The text is already bold. You can try the italics and underline effect on your own. Let's now try some of the effects in the paragraph group. Let's try changing the direction of the text. Notice we have removed the strike through effect. Click the blinking text direction arrow. As you move your mouse pointer over the rotate all text to 70 degree, you can see the text about us being rotated on the slide in the background. Since it is not the way we want it to look, press the escape key on your keyboard. We have selected the text box next to the title. You can change the line spacing between different paragraphs using the line spacing command. Click the blinking line spacing command. Select the blinking 2.0 option. Notice the vertical spacing between the lines has changed and this has caused the text to expand. You can also decrease the spacing. Click the blinking line spacing command. Select the blinking one option. Notice the spacing between the lines has decreased. Thus, you can format text using different commands available. In this topic, you will learn about using Format Painter. Format Painter is a command that allows you to copy the formatting of one item of text, graphic or symbol and apply it to another item. Let's see how you can achieve it. We have selected the title About Us. Click the blinking Format Painter command. Let's apply the same formatting to the title on slide 3. Click the blinking slide 3. Select the text Our Offerings. Click and drag your mouse from the first blinking box to the second blinking box on the slide to select the text. You will notice that once the style has been applied, the command format painter is no more highlighted. This indicates that if you want to use it again, you will have to click it again. This becomes tedious when you have to apply the same formatting to more than one item. We have added one more slide in the presentation. When you double click Format Painter, you can continue applying the style multiple times. Let's try it out. Since the title is already selected, double click the blinking Format Painter command. Let's apply the same formatting to the title on slide 4. Click the blinking slide 4. Click and drag your mouse from the first blinking box to the second blinking box on the side to select Text R Speciality. Let's apply the same formatting to the title on slide 5. Click the blinking slide 5. Click and drag your mouse from the first blinking box to the second blinking box on the slide to select the text. Notice all the titles now carry the same styles. You can use Format Painter to change the style of text box as well. Let's quickly see how you can do it. Click the blinking slide 3. We have selected the text box for you. Click the blinking Format Painter command. We have selected slide 4 for you. 
Click the blinking box. Notice the style of the text box has changed and is similar to the style of the box in slide 3. The shape is not the same because you have changed the shape. Thus, Format Painter allows you to apply the same style to different items. In this topic, you will learn about inserting bullets in slide, inserting numbered lists in a slide. Bullets and numbering list is a nice way of making your slide look neat and classy. Let's apply a different bullet style to the text on the slide 4. Notice we have reverted the style that we had applied to the text box in the last topic. Let's apply a different bullet to the list. Since the text box is already selected, click the blinking bullets drop down. Notice the various bullets available. Move your mouse over the blinking check mark bullets option. Notice the bullets have changed. If you do not want to use the bullets available here, you can use more options available in the bullets and numbering section. Click the blinking bullets and numbering command at the bottom. Bullets and numbering dialog box appears on the screen. Let's quickly explore different options before selecting a bullet. Size option allows you to change the size of the bullet measured as a percentage of the text size. By default, it is set to 100%. Let's change it. Click the blinking text box to select the text. Press the delete key on the keyboard. Type 150 at the blinking cursor position. Click the blinking OK button. Notice the size of the bullets has increased. Let's try changing the color of the bullet. We have opened the bullets and numbering dialog box for you. Click the blinking color drop down. Select the blinking red color. Click the blinking OK button. Notice the color of the bullets has changed to red. Let's now change the bullet to a symbol. We have opened the bullets and numbering dialog box for you. Click the blinking Customize button. Symbol dialog box appears on the screen. Click on the blinking box to scroll down. Click the blinking House symbol. Click the blinking OK button. Click the blinking OK button. Notice the bullets have changed to house-shaped bullets. Let's now insert a picture as a bullet. We have opened the bullets and numbering dialog box for you. Click the blinking picture button. Picture bullet dialog box appears on the screen displaying different bullets. You can also search for a particular type of bullet by entering the search text in the search text box and clicking the go button. By default, PowerPoint searches for bullets locally, that is, pre-installed bullets in your computer. If you want to search for bullets online, you can check the include content from office.com checkbox. If you have your own customized images, you can also insert them as bullets by importing them using the import button. Let's now try each of these one by one. Type triangle at the blinking cursor position in the search text box. Click the blinking go button. Notice two bullets that are available are displayed. We can search the bullets online as well. Notice there is a box include content from office.com below the search box. If we click that box and then make a search, we can get the bullets online. We can then include the bullets by using the import button. If you click the import button, add clips to organizer dialog box appears on the screen. The objects in pictures can be added to the clip organizer. You can try this on your own later. Click the blinking cancel button. Click the blinking cancel button. We have changed the bullet size for your convenience. Now let's see how you can convert the bulleted list to numbered list. Since the text box is already selected, 
click the blinking numbering drop down. Notice the various numbering options available. Click the blinking bullets and numbering command at the bottom. Select the blinking A, B, C option. Notice as soon as you select a numbering option, Start at option becomes enabled. You can choose to start the numbering from any number that you want. If you want the numbering to start from 2 or small b or capital B or Roman 2, you can use the start at nudge button to select or enter the appropriate number. Since the numbering is appropriate, let's keep it for now. Click the blinking OK button. Notice the list now is now numbered and we have changed the color to black. Thus, you can easily convert ordinary lists to bulleted and or numbered list. In this topic, you will learn about rearranging slides in a presentation, inserting slide from existing presentation. There are various slide operations that you can perform with slides like rearranging slides, inserting slides from another presentation, etc. Let's quickly learn each one of them one by one. You have already learned how to insert, delete and duplicate slides. Let's move slide 5 below slide 2. Click and drag the blinking slide 5 and drop it in the blinking box below slide 2. Notice slide 5 has now moved below slide 2 and has become slide 3. Thus, you can easily rearrange slides in a presentation. If your presentation has several slides, then you can use the slide sorter view to rearrange the slides as you can view more number of slides at a time. We will learn about the slide sorter view in the coming topics. You can also insert a slide into your presentation from another presentation. Let's learn how to do that. Let's assume you have a presentation that has a slide that has customer reviews in it. Let's insert that slide into the presentation. Click the blinking new slide arrow. Click the blinking reuse slides option. Reuse slides task pane appears on the right side of the slide. You can reuse or insert a slide from a slide library or from a PowerPoint file. If you have added a slide from a presentation earlier and want to add some more, then the location of the presentation appears in the Insert Slide From box. You can browse for a slide from a slide library or a PowerPoint file using the Browse button. The link opens a slide library and Open a PowerPoint file allow you to insert slides from respective locations. Remember, Slide Library Features is available only with Microsoft SharePoint Server 2007 and 2010. Let's insert a slide from a presentation. Click the blinking Open a PowerPoint file link. We have created a presentation with name Customer Reviews for you and saved in the Documents folder. Click the blinking Customer Reviews file. Click the blinking Open button. Notice all the slides from the selected presentation are displayed in the Reuse Slide task pane. The location of the presentation also appears in the Insert Slide From box. Let's insert the last two slides. Notice you get a preview of the slide when you move your mouse over it. Click the blinking slide Kids Speak. Notice the slide is inserted in the presentation. If you want to preserve the formatting of the source slide, then you can select the Keep Source Formatting checkbox at the bottom of the task pane. You will notice that the slide just inserted does not have any formatting. That is, the formatting of the destination slides is applied to the inserted slide. Thus, you can easily insert slides from other presentations. We have closed the Reuse Slides window now 
and move to the first slide of the presentation. In this topic, you will learn about checking your presentation for spelling mistakes. Many times it happens that you create a presentation in a hurry and while typing, you spell some words wrongly. It is always a good idea to create a presentation that has no spelling mistakes. PowerPoint 2010 allows you to check the spellings in your presentation before you are ready to present it to your audience. Let's quickly see how you can do it. Click the blinking review tab. Notice in the proofing group you have several commands like spelling, research and thesaurus. Spelling check suggests correction to spellings that PowerPoint thinks is the wrong spelling. You can either choose to accept the suggested change, reject the suggested change, or add the word to the dictionary. Let's check the presentation of any spelling mistakes. Click the blinking spelling command. Spelling dialog box appears on the screen. Notice PowerPoint has highlighted the first incorrect word Kavita. PowerPoint does not recognize the word Kavita and hence it appears in the not in the dictionary field. In the suggestion box, all possible corrections for the misspelled words are displayed. The word that you choose from the suggestions list is highlighted in the change to box. Now let's first study the various commands available on the spelling dialog box. Clicking the ignore button will ignore the spelling mistake and move on to highlight the next mistake. Ignore all will ignore any occurrence of the same spelling mistake in the entire presentation. Clicking the change button will change the spelling to the one selected from the suggestions list. Change all will change the erroneous word wherever it occurs in the entire presentation with the correct spelling selected from the suggestions list. Clicking the add button adds the word to the dictionary. This is particularly useful when you use some acronyms or abbreviations in your presentation but they are not recognized in the dictionary. If there are several options listed in the suggestions list and you are not sure which one to select, then clicking the Suggest button highlights the option that PowerPoint thinks is closest to the one that you intended to have when you were typing the word. Autocorrect allows you to automatically correct spellings as you type without having to confirm each correction every time. Options button allows you to specify various options. Let's now try out each of the options. Let's ignore the word Kavita. Click the blinking ignore button. Notice the next misspelled word Agarwal is highlighted. Let's assume you want to add this to your dictionary. Click the blinking add button. The word Agarwal is added to dictionary and the next time you type the same word, it will not be highlighted as a mistake. The next spelling mistake is highlighted. Click the blinking ignore button. We have ignored many more spellings in the presentation which we know are correct but are not in the PowerPoint dictionary. Notice PowerPoint has finished its spelling check and a message is displayed accordingly. Thus, you have successfully completed the spell check. Now let's study the spelling options. Click the blinking options button. PowerPoint options dialog box appears on the screen. Notice automatically the proofing option is highlighted in the left pane. On the right pane, you will see various options related to correction and formatting of text. Autocorrect options allow you to specify various autocorrect options. As explained earlier, autocorrect fixes spelling mistakes automatically for you. When correcting spelling in Microsoft Office programs options allows you to specify cases where to ignore spelling mistakes. You can even add your own dictionary using the custom dictionaries feature. Now let's study the various options available in the when correcting spelling in PowerPoint feature. Check spelling as you type checks the spelling of the word that you are typing. 
Use contextual spelling. When you select this checkbox, you instruct PowerPoint to find and fix contextual spelling mistakes. Example, mistakes like it is their ball instead of it is in their ball can be pointed out and corrected by using the feature. When checked, hide spelling errors hides any spelling mistakes and when cleared highlights all spelling mistakes. Click the blinking OK button to close the PowerPoint option dialog box. In this topic you will learn about different ways of viewing a slide. PowerPoint 2010 has four views namely Normal, Slide Sorter, Notes Page and Reading View. We have opened the View tab. By default, Normal View is selected. The Normal View is the editing view where you can write and edit text and apply themes and layouts to your presentation. In the Normal View, you have an outline and slides tab on the left, the main slide pane in the center, and a small notes pane at the bottom. Each of these parts is highlighted in the presentation. By default, your presentation opens in the normal view. You can even change the default view. Let's now move on to the next view. Click the blinking slide sorter view. In the slide sorter view, you can see small thumbnails of the slides present in your presentation. This view is particularly useful when you have numerous slides in your presentation. Moving slides up and down also becomes very easy in this view. Let's try it out. Click the blinking slide 6 and drag it to the blinking box. Notice the slide 6 has moved between slide 3 and 4. Thus, it is very easy to rearrange slides in this view. Press Ctrl plus Z to undo the change. Click the blinking Notes page view. Notes page view allows you to view and type notes in a full page format. Now let's move on to the last view, that is the reading view. This view allows you to view your presentation as your audience would view it. You can actually test all graphics, themes, animations in this view. Let's quickly see how it works. Click the blinking reading view. Notice the first slide in your presentation appears on the screen in full screen mode. Press the right arrow key on your keyboard. Notice the next slide in the presentation appears on the screen. Press the right arrow key on your keyboard. Notice the next slide appears on the screen. You can also move to the next slide by pressing the Enter key on the keyboard. To move to the previous slide, press the left arrow key on the keyboard. Notice the previous slide appears on the screen. To exit the slideshow, press the Escape key on the keyboard. Thus, you have exited the reading view. We have selected the normal view for you. Thus, you can easily view your presentation in different formats based on your need. This chapter ends here. In this topic, you will learn about inserting a picture. It is said that a picture speaks a thousand words. Pictures are not only used to convey ideas, but they also make a presentation look nicer without using long statements. Example. If a slide contains a picture of two people shaking hands, you immediately come to know that the contents in the slide relate to the corporate world. You can insert a picture in a slide in two ways. First, by choosing a content layout slide and clicking on the appropriate icon. Second, select the Insert tab and click on the picture icon. Let's learn to insert picture using both the ways. We have opened a blank PowerPoint slide for you. The Insert tab has been already opened. Click the blinking Picture option from the Images section. Insert Picture dialog box appears on the screen. 
By default, the location pictures is selected. Let's insert a picture from the sample pictures folder. Double click the blinking sample picture folder. Select the blinking tulips image. Click the blinking down arrow next to the insert button. Notice there are three options available. Insert, Link to File and Insert and Link. Insert option simply inserts the picture in the slide. Link to File creates a link to the picture. Insert and Link inserts the picture and creates a link to the picture. The purpose of creating a link is that whenever the picture changes or gets updated, you do not have to insert the picture again in the presentation. The image in the presentation automatically gets updated. Let's insert the picture. Select the blinking insert option. Notice the picture is inserted at the center of the slide. Let us now learn to insert picture using another method. We have added another slide for your convenience. The layout of the slide is title and content. Click the blinking insert picture from file icon. Insert picture dialog box appears on the screen. By default, the location pictures is selected. Let's insert a picture from the sample pictures folder. Double click the blinking sample pictures folder. Double click the blinking koala image. Notice the picture is inserted at the center of the slide. Thus you can easily insert pictures in your slide. In this topic, you will learn about inserting a chart in a slide. A chart is usually used to represent trends and patterns. It is easier to explain using charts in a presentation than using a table to represent the same information. Let's quickly see how you can insert a chart in your slide. We have opened a blank presentation for you and selected the title and content. You can also insert a graph from the illustrations group in the insert tab. We have opened a blank presentation and clicked on the insert tab for your convenience. Click the blinking insert chart icon. Insert chart dialog box appears on the screen. Notice the various categories of charts available. The type of chart or chart category to use depends on the type of information you want to represent. Example, pie charts are usually used to represent distribution. Column charts are useful when comparing products and so on. Each chart has a further subtype like clustered column or clustered column in 3D, etc. There are two ways of inserting chart in PowerPoint. One, Embedded end and insert a chart in your presentation. 2. Paste an Excel chart in your presentation that links to data in Office Excel 2010. When a chart is embedded, data for chart needs to be edited in Office Excel 2010. And the worksheet is saved with a PowerPoint file. This means the Excel sheet and the chart are linked together in PowerPoint. However, when you paste a chart from an Excel sheet, the data is linked to the Excel sheet itself. So, if you want to make changes to the chart, you first need to make changes to the Excel sheet and then the changes are reflected in your chart. In this case, the Excel sheet is saved as a separate file. Now you know the difference between the two ways of inserting chart. Let's insert a column chart in the slide. Click the blinking stacked cone chart type. Click the blinking OK button. Notice an Excel sheet is automatically opened and you can view PowerPoint and Excel windows side by side. The data that is used to represent the chart is contained within the Excel sheet. Let's change the category names. Double click the blinking cell A2 in the Excel sheet. We have deleted the contents for you. Type shirts at the blinking cursor position. Press the Enter key on the keyboard. Notice the category name in the presentation has also changed. Now 
Let's change a data value. Double click the blinking cell B2. We have selected contents for you. Type 10 at the blinking cursor position. Notice the shirts category bar has changed. Thus, you can easily change data in the Excel sheet and the changes are reflected in your PowerPoint presentation. Now let's save the presentation and see how the data can be edited later on as well. Simultaneously, press Ctrl plus S keys on your keyboard. We have saved the presentation with the name Charts Presentation. Suppose you want to edit the data once again. To edit the data, right-click the blinking box. Select the blinking Edit Data option. Notice the Excel sheet attached with the presentation is now open and the changes that you made last time are also retained. Thus, you can easily insert charts and edit chart data in PowerPoint 2010. In this topic, you will learn about inserting word art in a slide, applying different styles to word art. Word art style allows you to apply fancy styles to your text. You can also add various effects to a text item. We have created a sample single slide presentation for you. Let's see how we can insert word art to it. Click the blinking insert tab. Click the blinking down arrow on the word art icon. Notice the various word art options available. Click the blinking gradient fill, white, warm matte bevel option. Word art text box is inserted on the slide. Let's enter an appropriate title. Press the delete key to delete the text. Type desert at the blinking cursor position. Notice the title appears so attractive. Let's apply a different style. Press the escape key on the keyboard to select the text box. Move your mouse over the blinking word art style. Notice the style of the text changes as you move your cursor over the different styles. Now click on the blinking down arrow of word art styles. You will notice that the word art style is divided into two groups. The top section, that is, applies to selected text applies the selected style only to the text that you have selected. The bottom section, that is, applies to all text in the shape, applies the effect to the entire text in the shape. Clear word art at the bottom allows you to clear any previously applied style. Let's try a different effect. Move your mouse over the blinking styles. Let's apply this style. Click the blinking style. Now let's study the remaining options on the word art styles group. Text fill allows you to fill the text with a different color if you do not want to use the existing style. Text outline allows you to specify a color for the outline of the text. Text effects option allows you to apply different effects to the text. This topic ends here. In this topic, you will learn about inserting a table in a slide, different ways of inserting table in a slide, table operations, changing style of a table. Working with tables is easier in PowerPoint 2010 and you can create great looking tables in PowerPoint using various table styles. We have opened a blank presentation for you. Let's insert a table. Click the blinking insert tab. Click the blinking table icon to insert the table in the presentation. Let's insert a table having four rows and two columns. Click the blinking box. Notice a 4 by 2 table is inserted in your slide. As soon as a table is inserted, Table Tools tab is enabled and you can see various table styles. Let's insert some text. Click the blinking box. Type serial number at the blinking cursor position. We have pressed the tab key for your convenience. Type task at the blinking cursor position.
we have entered the remaining data for you. Now let's change the style of the table. Click the blinking medium style to accent to option from the table styles group in the design tab. Notice the table appearance has changed. Thus, you can easily insert and format tables in PowerPoint 2010. There is another way to insert table in a slide. We have inserted a new slide for you. Click the blinking insert tab. Click the blinking down arrow on the table icon. Click the blinking insert table option. Insert table dialog box appears on the screen. By default, the number of columns is set to 5 and number of rows is set to 2. If you simply click the OK button, a table with 5 columns and 2 rows will be inserted. However, if you want to change the number of columns or rows, you can use the nudge buttons to increase or decrease the number or enter the desired number manually. Let's reduce the number of columns. Press the delete key on the keyboard. Let's insert a table having 7 columns and 2 rows. Type 7 at the blinking cursor position. Click the blinking OK button. Notice a table with 7 columns and 2 rows is inserted in the slide. Thus, in this topic, you have learned different ways of inserting table in a slide.